doing one more match after this. We have finished all of our picks and bans. So, uh, blue team has banned out Kha'Zix, Shivana, and Vi. I do not agree with the Shivana ban. The other two I do. Uh, purple ban, Master Yi, LeBlanc, and Uder. All solid bans. Again, Uder, I'm assuming, is a target ban. I think there are better uses of that ban. I'm so surprised. Why does no one ban Jax? No one picked him this game, but it's still shocking that no one would have banned. I, I don't know. It just seems odd to me. Uh, in terms of picks, blue team has a Yasuo, a Lucian, a Jax, a Aatrox, and a Morgana. So Aatrox is the only knockup to initiate for Yasuo. That's not such a bad thing. It's not... A pe for a long time, I myself and a lot of other people argued that, oh, Yasuo is only good if you have a team to knock up for him. Well, that definitely helps him. We've already seen in LCS and a couple other tournaments and stuff that Yasuo, he can make his own plays. Wait, Jax was picked. Yes, he was. I'm blind. Sorry. Um, Diamond level commentary. Uh, uh, my eyes are tired. My eyes are tired and my brain is dead. Um, well, I can take over if you like. Okay, go over picks and bans here. <laughs> Okay, so we have a Jax top, a Aatrox in the jungle, Morgana Lucian bot lane, and the Yasuo mid. As previously mentioned, um, Aatrox's dark flight on his Q is his only knockup for Yasuo. Not such a bad thing though, as that is also probably um, very good initiation, and Yasuo's uh, team comp will get... Your mic cut out. Oh, my bad. Yasuo... Um, Dark Flight is the only thing that will knock up, but he should have ample opportunity to get Steel Tempest stacks, as his team is very mobile and has good amounts of peel. And uh, Dark Flight is uh, initiation for Aatrox, so that shouldn't go too badly, actually, I don't think. Um, Lucian and Morgana bot lane is one of the strongest combos in the current meta, especially against a Lulu, because um, they can deal with uh, Lulu and Sivir's poke quite well assuming Black Shield is used correctly, and Lucian uses his dash against Glitterlands correctly. So I really like that team comp. Um, it will take a little bit of time to get going, but once it's in full swing, it should be quite powerful. Purple team has banned out Master Yi, LeBlanc, and Udyr, all good bands. And then we have Akali mid, Sivir and Lulu bot lane, Renekton top, and Fiora in the jungle. Fiora is actually not an A plus pick right now, but with Feral Flare, I'm actually not a. I actually quite like her. Her ganks still are not super reliable, but she now has an incentive to stay in the jungle all day and just be a butthole and farm. So I'm excited to see how team fights unfold. Uh, Purple team has a lot of. Honestly, either team can come out ahead here. I'm not saying one clear winner, but I do think if it goes late game, blue team will have the definite edge. Also, um, just noting that Sivir and Lulu are running double heal bot. They did um, change it so that uh, there is the 50% debuff on multiple heals. However, double heal does make it extremely difficult for a uh, jungler to gank bot. So that will be very interesting to see. Sorry, I'm typing silly answers in chat. Yes, I'm so excited for Braum. Oh my god. I love how nice Braum is. Like, he doesn't say anything mean at all. He, he He's the most adorable champion of all time, and if you disagree with that, you're wrong. Curse voice is not banned. The timers were banned. Curse has already removed that function. So it's, no, it's not banned. However, any mod that changes the in-game um, experience and gives your team a benefit has been banned. So no timers, no auto voice chat. Um... Nothing that is not already included in the client and that gives you an advantage. So using Log King to look people up before the game is fine. But if there was a mod that auto found people's Law Kings result while you were in the middle of the game and was like, hey, that person has X runes, you should buy Y items, that would be banned. Yeah, anything, that, I believe their terminology is anything that integrates directly into the client and changes the game experience from the point where you click play and the point where it says win or loss, that is not allowed.
You hate the kind of support Braum is. You only pay, play poke supports, not peel. Yeah, it's going to be a different play style, and it's going to be an adjustment for myself as well, but he's such a cool champion. I just really, really like him. I, I'm excited to add him to my repertoire. Oh, repertoire. You think you fancy using big words like that? I'm one fancy son of a bitch. I really like the name fish deodorant. Like that's a concept I would never, I never would have combined those two words before. <laughs> yes, curse voice is legal because they took out the timers. It's a Fiora jungle. I have not seen one of those in a while. I, I feel guilty because I have played support. Oh, sorry, I've I played mid Fiora. Wait, I played Jungle Fiora. Yes, I played Jungle Fiora on the stream before, and now I feel guilty because now I see someone else is doing it. I was like, oh, oh, it, it's okay, but there are better picks. Did you long for a worthy opponent? Yes, Blue Buff wow, was a very Jack worthy opponent. Blue Buff was a very worthy opponent. It kills me like 50% of the time. Wow. So apparently Canadian Demi wants to lay Fiora. I think he means play Fiora, but who knows for sure. Hey man, dad ass. <laughs> Honestly, Curse, no, uh, Neek, I don't believe they have the auto voice integration that was also ruled illegal by Riot. I think you can meet up with other people and like coordinate using um, voice chat, but it doesn't auto connect you. It was a joke, Die Hard. I, I, I was being, or I was attempting to be funny. I failed. We can't all be as funny as I am. Like my mom says, I'm funny. So. It must be true. She actually doesn't think I'm funny. <laughs> I dislike starting a ward on supports. I like the potions. I like having a ward when you're against a very aggressive jungler. Someone They're who's versus a Fiora, though. Gank. Yeah, but I'm not saying if you... I'm just saying if it was like a Nocturne or something. Nocturne doesn't gank pre-6 usually. Oh my god, you think you're so smart. I think I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> My so, silver opinion totally matters. I demand you listen to me. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so we, we mentioned already the double heal bot lane. Not that great an option. Why did... Okay. I guess that was just her explorer. What, Nami... Sorry, Lulu just used every single one of her consumables. I really, really like fish deodorant. That joke was just really fucking tops. It, yeah, it, it is a good name, but uh, why are you using so many potions? She had like a third of her health missing, and she chugged literally everything in her inventory. Okay, so we have um, pretty standard so starts. Doran's Blade on Yasuo, Lucian, and Jax. Hunter's Machete on Aatrox, Spell Thief's Edge on Morgana. Again, we're seeing Cloth 5 on Akali. I'm not sure if I agree with that. Personally, what do you think? I would have gone for Doran's Shield. You're versus a Yasuo, who should be bullying her out early game. And the Duran Shield will block his auto attacks. I believe it also blocks damage on his Q. I think someone's corrected me on that before. But either way, I just... The regen, the block damage, I just think it would be better. I'm assuming she's built it because she wants to rush a Arm Guard. But I still think Duran Shield would just be a better option. Up top, we're seeing uh, Jackson Renekton duel. They're trading damage pretty well. Impossible to say who will win from this first skirmish, but it looks like Jax is backing off. They're both drinking potions, so it doesn't look as though either of them will get a kill unless they re-engage. Um, Yasuo is being very aggressive in mid lane. He does have a ward down, but he's still making himself quite vulnerable. Granted, the enemy jungler is Fiora, who is not exactly the biggest threat. So Morgana landing some decent bindings bot lane, she's putting some good pressure on, and I mentioned it earlier, having no potions left on Lulu is really going to ha harm them in this lane. Ooh, that, I don't agree with that uh, Tormented Soil, though. 
if I were Morgana, I would be trying to stand up past minions and auto attack harass. I would be then abuse. Ooh, that may actually be a kill. Nope. They get the flash out from Sivir though, and that's going to be Sivir most likely going back to base. Sivir's sticking around, and I'm not really a big fan of that decision. Lucian's um, attacks have a rather large range. Granted, they do require a minion to bounce off of or a uh, skill shot, but she's still putting herself in danger here. They, they also require mana, though. Uh, he that has enough true. for 1Q now, though. Fiora coming around. I think she's waiting for a dodge. Um, and says she's going to come through lane. Sivir used her spell shield right at the start of that. So there's no way for her to join. You have to remember that spell shield does not block things like tormented soil takes. You can't just use it for free mana on that. Uh, so she needs to not rush that. Uh, so Lulu staying alone. She is going to be taken down very quickly. And that is a easy kill over to actually Morgana from the final tick. I understand that when you are a bot laner, it is you really don't want your um your your stuff to your tower to go down. You don't want them to get pre hits on your tower. But at the same time, giving them a kill is far more damaging. You have to know when to go back. For sure, and, and I mean, still staying. All you're doing at this point is you're zoning yourself from farm. Yasuo right now has twice a Akali CS, 15 CS, so he is effectively up by one kill. Um, she does have the cloth armor, but it's not doing very much against his uh, mana is poking her ass. Lucian also has a major CS advantage on Sivir. Like we said earlier, uh, you really need to be ready to go back home. So I want to take another peek back top lane here. Jax is actually ahead in experience slightly, but that's just because of how the minion wave is pushed. Renekton's now level 5. I want to see what happens when they hit level 6 here. Both Aatrox and Fiora are just happily farming their jungles. Neither of them are interfering with the other. Um, they're not really doing much in the way of ganking, which is fine. I don't think either of them are particularly strong at ganking with the Aatrox. If the lane is shoved, maybe. But um, I'm just curious to see whether when they will uh, be actually helping out their team or whether they just plan to stay in the jungle until as late as possible. So Jax hit level 6 first top lane. He did not have to blow his ult. He instead just laid down a crazy amount of pain onto Renekton and left him just sort of hobbling through this lane. One more engage from Jax, though. We'll secure this kill for him. Renekton has a problem, and that is that Renekton is a lane bully who sort of falls off in late game, whereas Jax kind of struggles a little bit in the early game and turns into a hyper carry. So going even or losing lane for ja for Renekton is not really an option. In fact, going even is the same as losing lane. Um, so I'd really like to see a, a, a gank come up top from Fiora when Jax is super shoved. I'd like to see Renekton be more aggressive or something along those lines. So mid lane, uh, Yasuo playing a little too aggressively. He ends up just sort of flashing away from Akali, even though he wasn't chase being chased. A uh, little bit early on the flash there, but most of that just boiled down to how aggressively he was positioning. Akali does do damage now. I mean, she's made it to level 6. She's survived. Uh, down bot lane, I'm seeing Morgana list missing a lot of very easy bindings. She's hitting some good ones, but some that are sort of just right in her face, she seems to just sort of be panicking and just throwing them off in a random direction. Binding is actually a very forgiving skill shot because I believe the hitbox is slightly larger than what the particle would have you believe. Very nice spell shield that time, blocking out the block, uh, sorry, the the binding, and uh, making her survive that would what would have been an easy death. So in the top lane, Jax is already ahead, about eighteen ish CS. Oh, Lucian does get that kill bot lane. Uh, similar though, just them staying too long bot lane. They have their double heal, and they've been they've used both of them. It's not as though they're over holding them or anything like that, and so they're just getting constantly poked. They're getting hit by bindings, and in the long term, they're just getting destroyed. Lucian is up a 30 CS advantage, as well as one kill and one assist. Like. Sivir is in big trouble right now, and here's where we're seeing the real disadvantage of a jungler like Fiora, uh, uh, who is a Feral Flare jungler, is that, or a Elder Lizard jungle, 
apparently also goes well on her. But the point is, she cannot help her lanes at all, and she doesn't even seem willing to help her lanes, frankly. I would really like to see uh, her help out bottom lane when uh, Lucian and his support are just constantly pushed, but instead she's just merrily farming away. Mm -hmm. Now that she has her level 6, I want to see her get a couple damage items if she can, and then just sneak around the side of bot lane here. Uh, as you mentioned, they're pushed very heavily. Lulu Polymorph should be enough to, to act as an initiate for her. She can jump in, land an alt, and hopefully pick up some kills. Aatrox, coming top. Dax go does go down, and like I said earlier, Renekton really needs that lead, so that's awesome for him. Fiora helps uh, ward Aatrox off, and that's a definite win for Purple Team, getting a kill for Renekton and getting Jax uh, out of lane for a little while. So Yasuo is having some issues hitting his Q's mid lane. Um, honestly, he should be winning this lane by more. He is ahead by about 15 to 20 CS, but it's not to the point where it's really that meaningful. I am wondering if his Q is... No, it's definitely on Smartcast. Um, they did clean up the animation. It's, it's actually fairly easy to hit. So yeah, I'm a little concerned about the fact that he's missing them consistently. Mm -hmm. I, I'm seeing him miss almost every Q. I mean, granted, if Akali is dodging them with R charges, that's a victory, but she's just sidestepping them. And oftentimes she's not even having to sidestep. It seems Down. as though Yasuo is just playing the push game. He's not even trying to harass his opponent. And a free farm to Akali, yeah, you're stopping her from roam. That's a good thing. But unless you're also keeping her from farming or killing her or doing something else, that's going to be pretty scary come the mid-game teamfights once she has some items and is able to just sort of jump onto your carries and they die. Down on bot lane, we're seeing that Lucian's advantage is 90 CS to Sivir's 40. That's a 50 CS advantage plus a kill and assist, and yet Fiora is nowhere to be seen. Frankly, I mean, I understand playing a farming jungler, but at that point, she's just, she's just dead weight on her team, unfortunately. These bindings are, have been really good, though. So it looks like Blue, uh, Blue Team with Lucian and Morgana are just going to be able to take the tower uncontested, giving Lucian another kill from Lulu. Here comes Fiora, though. Black Shield going down Lucian. Morgana just binds her. They're walking away. And they just simply walk away, just completely unafraid. They do get the exhaust in that trade, but, I mean, that's not that big of an advantage. Sivir, again, just tanking by, uh, the Dark Bindings. I, I don't know what's going on here. If she's not paying attention, if she's lagging, it's really hard to offer advice when you can't really get into their mind. She seems to just sort of be standing here auto-attacking, and she's obviously not AFK moving. Right, and it doesn't seem to be a latency issue, because ra people are rather vocal when they're having um, those, those sort of issues with lag. But uh, she just seems to... Uh, really be struggling with some basic mechanics of dodging and, and uh... uh Basilals is mentioning, hey, don't blame the jungler like always. I would never do that, but you have to admit that the jungler's job is to influence lanes and set the team ahead. It doesn't matter where she does that. is at fault for every lane, or the jungler is, at, is has a larger responsibility than his or her teammates. But the jungler is one-fifth of the team. Even with Feral Flare, the jungler does have a responsibility to help her team out. And Fiora has uh, really not been fulfilling that. Yeah, I I'm fine with her ignoring Elaine if she's using that time to counter jungle. I'm fine with her not counter jungling if she's going to use that time to get objectives. I'm fine with her doing neither of those things if she's going to gank and set any lane ahead. But at the moment, it seems as though she's just sort of walking around her jungle might show up in a lane but not really do much there. Then she like goes back. I just don't I, I don't know what her thought process is at the moment. I don't understand what she is trying to do to set her team ahead. And again, that's nothing against the player. This is a question they need to be asking themselves. If you're not examining your own mistakes, you're not going to improve as a player. That's the point right. of these workshops. 
a large part of of playing any role is asking yourself, what is my end game? And obviously, that your end game is not get CS or get fed. That that is a means to your actual end. So, for instance, a jungle should be saying, I want to. Um, a jungle fear should be saying, I want to be fat and and run around the entire enemy team. You know, uh, using my blade waltz and gain lots of kills. Is she going to be able to do that when there is a four zero one Lucian running around at fourteen minutes? Likely not. Counter jungling as Fiora is not risky in any way, assuming you have vision on where their jungler is. Counter jungling doesn't mean killing their jungle necessarily, it means taking away something of theirs. Having a timer on red buff and saying, oh, Aatrox is top. Okay, well, that's a free red buff for you. You've just helped have an influence on the outcome of the match. Krypton is making a very good point. He says if, if Fiora comes bot, she's just going to end up dying and really just making the problem worse. At this point in the game, that is true. Lucian is so fed at this point that, heck, all five of them could have come bot, and I think he would stand a chance of getting a kill or two. That is an absolutely true point. Very good. But... That did not happen in a vacuum. She had plenty of opportunities to come down earlier. Now it's too late. That doesn't change the fact that she should have come earlier, unfortunately. I do not mean to pick on this individual player, but that is simply how it is. Those are the facts. So Purple Team getting very split up here. They do not want this fight. They need to just completely retreat, reset, and try and find an advantage for themselves elsewhere. In the process, they are going to be giving up Dragon. It seems like Fiora is going back in. I, I would not agree with that, personally. And people in chat are saying um, Fiora struggles with counter jungle. Fiora struggles with um, ganking. You know... If you if you have all of these qualifications, if a jungler struggles with anything but passively farming the jungle, you may want to consider, do I actually want to play that champion? I mean, I love Fiora. I really play Fiora quite a bit, but I do not think she is um, the best choice for a jungle right now. I, I think she's a fine top laner in certain matchups, but as a jungle, I, I, I honestly... Okay, I actually just typed out a very long thing. I, I feel like I should say that on stream because it's very relevant advice that a lot of people don't seem to take to heart. I'm not saying that Fiora is a good counter jungler. I'm saying it's something for her to keep in the back of her mind. You need to recognize opportunities. You need to recognize ways that you can sort of stop the hemorrhaging of your team. I'm not saying that she needs to carry her team. I'm not saying that she should necessarily be counter jungling even. I'm saying that you need to find a way to stop your team from getting too far behind. And that needs to happen before they get behind. You need to play actively, not reactively, regardless of what role you're playing. Uh, playing reactively is a good skill to have, but it's less reliable. At this point, we've dedicated quite a bit of, a, of a air time to bot lane and Fiora. Really don't want to come across like we're picking on those players. So let's talk about top lane for a bit. Renekton has come ahead with 3-1 three, one, three to one right now, so he actually does have an advantage over Jax. Jax does have uh, 30 CS on him, so in the end, they're about even, but Renekton is quite strong. Renekton is working towards um, Warden's Mail Plus, uh, Giant's Vault, what is that, Randuin's? That's Randuin's, right? Yes. Yeah, if I was Renekton, I would be continuing the bullying that he's doing right here, and he's doing a very good job of it. I would be trying to continue to do that to slow down Jax as much as possible, and then I would be taking double golems. Uh, get that CS lead back in your advantage. You're not going to be turret diving him here, so I don't see much point staying. Uh, looks like he's actually going to try and proxy farm. That is a risky move, but it, it most likely will work out for him. Because of the, the vision that they have on the map, they know that there's not too much of a threat to him. So that, that's so a good option as well. Right now, um, top lane is, is a sort of an island in terms of lanes. So I'm wondering if you have any advice. Let's say I'm, I'm Renekton or I'm Jax. What would you recommend that I do at this point in the game? Should I be trying to stay top and leverage my advantage, or should I be trying to help my team? Unfortunately, Renekton's team fight is pretty mediocre. He does not have his flash up, so it's not as though he can flash stun for like a, a crazy initiate. Uh, that sometimes does work. It's risky, but I mean, he doesn't have that opportunity at the moment. So he has... 
I would argue two to three op- uh, things that he can do at the moment. He can bully Jax, which is sort of what he's going for. But the problem with that is that he has a Tiamat, so he's automatically going to push the lane and give Jax free farm. So that's pretty much gone. He can try to proxy farm like he was doing before. If he is going to proxy farm, he needs to be trying to also take away jungle objectives every time he goes past turret. In this case, it looks like he's actually going to die. He's... oh, no, actually good stun and E away. Uh, but regardless, he needs to try and sort of keep Jax busy, slow him down any way he can, and try and take away some enemy objectives, in this case some of their jungler camps. Um, the third opportunity is once his flash is up, he could roam and try and fight with his team. So Aatrox comes mid, helps Yasuo get to kill on Akali. Um, Lulu is now holding the lane against Yasuo, stopping him from trying to take the tower. Um, but it does look like Yasuo is going to be able to ignore her presence. Yasuo does have about 40 CS up on Akali, but uh, Akali does have an assist, so it's not a massive unstoppable advantage. However, as the game goes on, Yasuo is a hyper carry in theory of melee ADC. So we'll see whether he's able to uh, really translate that gold advantage in lane into uh, tangible benefits for his team. For sure. Now, a very nice job on Renekton here. I don't expect to see him being able to beat out Aatrox as well with his cooldowns. Yasuo goes on Lulu. Lulu uses Wild Growth. Very good call on her part. She does survive, but it does look like Yasuo is just going to take the tower. So, despite being equal in kills, Blue Team does have about a 4,000 gold advantage. Um, and when gold doesn't come from kills, it comes from CS, it comes from towers. And as you can see, Blue Team has two towers up on Purple Team, and they, across the board, have better farm, with the exception of Fiora over Jax. So in terms of Akali's item, it looks like she's just going for the revolver, and then she's probably finishing up a Rylai's. Given the lack of CC, I'm fine with that. Uh, that was a, a ballsy alt coming out from <laughs> Fiora. Fiora is 2-1-1 now. She's gained back in the game a little, and with her ult and her Hydra and the Feral Flare, she should be doing quite a lot of damage on the gauges. It's just, I'm not 100% sure that's enough to sort of um, cancel out the impact that a 5-1-1 Lucian will be having on team fights. Ultimately, I think Purple Team's great hope lies in both Renekton and Fiora, if they can pull it together to uh, drag mid and bot to victory. Yeah, if, if Renekton was able to get onto a squishy target, be that Lucian, or Yasuo, or Morgana, then I would expect Fiora to be able to clean up in that time. She has the damage, she has the way to get back into this game, but it really is going to boil down to her decision making. How is she going to execute that damage? Where is she going to apply it on the map? And that was our complaint with her. It wasn't anything against her as a player, it was just you need to be actually using the resources you have to affect the game. Team picks up a completely uncontested dragon, and it's important to notice that Purple Team has no vision on it. I mean, Fiora comes in wards it now, but they will no have no timer, and that's important. Because having a timer means that you know when dragon is up, and that means you can say, you know, one minute before it spawns, you can reward the area, you can repair for it. When you don't have the timer, it's sort of a stab in the dark, and you're at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. I would still argue, though, that you do need to time it regardless. They just dropped a ward. Just say in chat, like, approximately this time. We saw them headed towards it around this time. You still get an average time. And that way you can still place that ward a minute or so beforehand. But yeah, you are completely right. Having the exact timer is so much more useful. Mm -hmm. Having a guess is better than nothing, but that being said, of course you want the actual number. Alright, so Fiora, her Feral Flare is completed stacking, actually. So we're going to try and see <laughs> if she's able to apply that in a meaningful way. There is the three second bindings coming out from Morgana to worry about. Akali just kind of caught out by herself. Dashes over to Aatrox, the knockup comes in. Fiora landing some good damage. Her ult goes off, instant kill. Now she's going directly onto Lucian. Lucian jumps over the wall and escapes quite easily. Uh, Le Lulu, what what is she doing? Okay, I think Lulu's AFK. If Lulu was able to collapse there, she would have got a free kill onto Morgana. 
hopefully that is just, you know, a, 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 a disconnect or something, and she is not AFK or rage quitting. Because um, if you can't come for a 60 minute game, or, you know, however long a game lasts, or if you're going to get real mad and quit out, please don't play. Oh! Was that. Uh, no, that was just her that? auto aggro. Oh, that was a very okay. good cleanup by Fiora. That's what we've been wanting to see from her. Just showing up where she's needed, get some damage in there, get some kills. That was an awesome job there. In the meantime, Renekton's still just pressuring this top as much as he can. Uh, double dashing through Jax. Jax gets his leap strike on, and the stun goes down. I think that he's. Okay, he flashes. Jax flashes, and this is going to be a very dead Renekton unless he's able to get a another stun and dash. No, he dashes first, so he's not going to get away here. Okay, that was a disconnect. Lulu is back now. Thank goodness. Uh, okay, so Jax actually doubted himself there. He walked towards Renekton, took two tower shots, got stunned, walked back, walked back in. He, he could have easily got that kill. He just didn't quite trust himself to do so. And in that delay... Akali was able to loop up and get a free kill for herself. He's now on to Aatrox. Aatrox's jump is already down, so there should be no escaping from this whatsoever. Yes, well, Consider is coming up the river, and it's like, nope, you know what, I don't want to die. And I agree with that decision. It's probably for the best. There's a 12-second cooldown left on uh, the ultimate here for Fiora, taking away these camps so quickly. This is, again, the, what we want to see. She's absolutely doing everything that she needs to do now. I mean, you could say her early game performance was a sacrifice in order to obtain this result. I'm not 100% sure it was worth it, though. Multitasking is better, yes. But she's, she's doing what she needs to do, so good, good job for her. Lulu, coming down the river, she's warding the barren area. Um, meanwhile, Lucian, uh, Morgana, and Yasuo are all sort of doing the ARAM dance. They're sort of just like, did to do, looking for a team fight, maybe we'll want to shove. Not really accomplishing anything in particular, though. So I really like that Renekton is going pretty much full armor. There's not a lot of magic damage from to deal with. Jax does some mixed damage, but mostly physical. And Morgana is not building AP. So I, I really like that decision. I wouldn't even mind seeing something like a Thornmail on him. I, I've said a number of times in our workshops that I feel Thornmail is a little undervalued at the moment, just because of the prevalence of auto-attacking teams at, the, at this time. Fiora comes in, uh, Blade Walls is down. She can't quite finish off Lucian, and now Aatrox and Lucian are chasing her down. Renekton swings around to rendezvous with his mid laner, and Akali is coming through too. However, mid tower is still up, so they're all kind of caught between two towers. So they had to head into the enemy jungle and sort of loop around. They're sort of getting hungry for kills and not so much for towers, which I'm not a big fan of as a strategy. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Jax is split pushing top. He's going to get that tower very quickly. I actually like that decision on him. His Triforce is almost done. So take away that tower, get that little bit of extra gold from that split push. Once he has that core item, then he can go back in. Seeing uh, another Morgana binding connecting with Sivir. Spell shield's not quite working out for her. Morgana alt and Hourglass goes down. Not going to be enough to save them. Akali gets the resets, and they should just be able to walk out. Ooh, she... Mm, really not a fan of that. Akali could have easily continued on. Um, she tried to use her stealth field, but you're in between two towers. Towers give true vision. Here's Yasuo being hungry for kills, coming in behind Sivir and uh, Renekton. Renekton lands a wonderful stun, saving his ally, but it looks like he is going to go down. R.I.P. you brave, brave lizard. Meanwhile, if you are at the red, she's just going back. Um, she could have come behind, but... Yeah, her ult will be up quite soon. I would expect to see her waiting on that. Oh, maybe not. I, I don't I don't agree with that. She her ult was in about five seconds. She could have waited, got her team together, and then gone in with the ult. As soon as you're dropped at all low on Fiora, just pop your ult, boom, you're healed right back up. I also don't Blue like team. Cutlass on her. Blue team does that is a major advantage, not as much as it was back in um, season. Uh, Lulu right now is talking about, probably talking about my DC thing. It's not against the rules to listen to the stream as we play, but we recommend you don't because you're not getting much out of it. It's a three minute delay. 
you're not going to be like getting very much useful advice that pertains to you in the moment and we put all the videos up on YouTube afterwards and honestly it causes a lot of people quite a bit of lag so we really recommend you just turn the stream off and focus on your gameplay it's pretty distracting to have the stream open yeah now I was starting to comment on Cutlass on Fiora I, I would really like to see a Tiamat it really works well with her alt. It's not the old 5 TM up build that uh, Fiora used to do, but it's very effective. So I I get that she wants to be able to chase people down, but she already has enough attacks. Oh wait, she already, why is she building Hydra and a Blade of the Rune King? Because she is man mode. She's woman mode, actually. But yeah, no, I I don't fully agree with that. I would like to see probably Black Claver. So while you were discussing um, her build, Blue Team actually went and picked up another dragon. Like we said, having the timer is really important. Blue Team was again able to just uncontested, without any vision from Purple Team, just scoop up some global golden experience for their team. Unfortunate jump there from Aatrox. I'll just keep the camera following him so that he can be shamed. So rude. <laughs> so now their team, they took Dragon, Blue Team took Dragon, that's great. Now another team doesn't really have a focus. You have Lucian split pushing bottom, but the other members of Blue Team are just sort of, everyone's just doing the ARAM dance again. Fiora Blade popping him very quickly. We have Jax in the middle of like four members of a uh, purple team and he's going down. Uh, but Lucian, completely uncontested, just popping down towers on bot lane. Let's see how deep he can go. If he can get another inhibitor, this will be a major coup for blue team despite uh, losing uh, Jax and Aatrox. Mm -hmm. Now I want to point out that purple team is responding with a Baron call. Uh, Fiora can solo this. I would say even that she would be questionable. can solo it, but she's standing in the green goo, which is not going well for her. And, uh... Lucian pops the inhib turret. Sivir's coming to stop him, but he has five kills and, and a little bit of farm. Actually, no, they're pretty much even on farm now. But he has five kills on her. She's just forced to run away as he takes that turret. I mean, that inhibitor. Meanwhile, you have Morgana sort of, sort of dancing around the edge of Baron, waiting for a steal but she does not take it because of smite. It was a very good bind. She flash bound and uh, was able to connect with Renekton on it. So major prop solution there. He saw both teams doing the Aaron dance and he was like, you know what? No, this will not do. Mm -hmm. And just trying to force ends to games like, like what he did is what I want to see in these games. That's how you force the enemy team to make a misplay. Oh, they cycle poorly. They oh, they don't respond at all. Or uh, there's just so many ways that you can use it and read that situation to set your team ahead. Well, well, everyone else is just sort of sitting around going like, "What do we do now?" So Jack's working towards his own Randwins now. That will be very useful seeing as they are kind of getting destroyed by physical damage at the moment. Right. I'm very uh, happy. I'm I'm very, very happy actually that, uh... to see an hourglass built on a Kali. A lot of them don't seem to build them and it is so, so powerful. We're really seeing the power of a CS here because Purple team has 19 kills, the blue team is 16, and yet, look at the gold advantage between the two teams. So very close on that Jax kill. This Lucian is just really doing really good positioning. Um, last game I was uh, pretty harsh towards the positioning of the participants, but this Lucian is really showing us how it's done. Always staying right on the edge of uh, where he needs to be, never putting himself in danger, but really applying a lot of pain without really sacrificing his GPS for his safety. That being said, his name is Calling the Doctor, so I'm assuming he's a Lucian main. Or like a medical professional. No. Uh, Kali looping around the back. I don't see this going well for her. 
She's also standing on a pink ward here. Sivir is here though. Great speed buff for her team. Sivir not quite connecting with the boomerang blade. That's something that she might want to just keep an eye on in the future. Again, not able to use that black shield. I've not seen her have much success with it all game. I really want to give props to both Sivir and Lulu. They both got, had a really unsuccessful lane, and that's really frustrating, and it gets really annoying. But they both stuck with it, and they both recovered quite well, considering where um, Sivir is actually out farming Lucian, and, and Lulu is 0 6 0 down, whereas she was like, what, 0 4 1? Mm -hmm. So, just really big props to them for keeping their cool and not raging out or giving up. Now she just needs 6 kills so that she can be 6 6 6. How dare you, Lulu is not the Antichrist, she is beautiful. I'm pretty sure Satan tastes purple, just saying. And yes, I do remember most of my viewers, Lander. I try to welcome people to the stream. Right now, when we're shoutcasting, though, I usually try and focus on the game. Usually. Sometimes he's just so overwhelmed with love. That doesn't sound like me. Alright, so Dragon is up yet again. We'll see if they take yet another on blue side or not. Looks like they are going for it. Right, this... This time, Purple has enough vision to see that they're taking it, but again, they do not have a timer, and they will not know exactly what time it went down. Nice binding onto Lulu. Nothing really gonna come from it, though. These bindings have been very good, but it concerns me that I'm not seeing anyone even attempt to dodge them. Like, you, I can give all the praise I want to Morgana, but if someone takes half a step to the side, well, all of a sudden she's missing them, right? And I'm not seeing people attempt to dodge her. Here we see Jax has graduated past his pimply teenager phase and is now just a monster. And Fiora is now angry mama. That's the worst kind. <laughs> oh, for sure. Hey, right, so great job on purple side. As we mentioned, like that, that whole farm lane that went down mid with Akali, assuming Akali gets that farm, she's still going to be relevant late game. And that's pretty much what we're seeing here. Flash over the binding. It's still nice to see someone trying to do it. And good re-engage from Akali there. Being able to abuse the spell vamp that she does have and uh, just pick up that kill very, very quickly. I, I love Jax taking the tower up top. Blue team is just constantly, they always have uh, one person just being a bottle, the purple team. I don't know why he was teleporting there. Like, he could have easily recalled or done something else. It wasn't as though he really had anything to do mid. Maybe he was attempting to kill Akali, but I don't see, I, I wouldn't expect to see Akali falling for that. It is a mystery. Can we unravel the mystery? It looks as though the game is over and people are asking for feedback in chat. Awesome. Um, as for feedback, we put the videos up like a day or two afterwards, so you'll be able to watch our advice in real time. Yeah, I would definitely re recommend just watching back the YouTube videos once they are posted. Uh, we do try and do a post-game analysis in terms of like final comments and builds and stuff. Is this the last game for today? I think I'm going to say yes. If there's still some people interested, I would be totally down to do a viewer game. But my brain is going. I don't want to do workshops where I'm not offering any decent advice. So the guy uses his, his Q and he he gets a kill? Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah, kills are good. Just really good collapse from Purple Team there. I, I really do approve of that. I really liked it. both teams. I'm not saying every team has had a perfect player, but this has been a really even match. I mean, the last few workshops I did, we saw a lot of stomps since it was fairly new in the season. And now that things are evening out a bit more, we're seeing some really even matches where it's really anyone's game. And that's obviously very exciting to see. For sure. And it's uh, awesome seeing so many new people not only participating in the workshop, but showing their support through forum posts, uh, just being in chat. Like, it's great seeing so many of you here. We are trying to build this into a community over time. Ideally, we will eventually get partnership and we'll be able to do like a full-time stream. So it's just really nice seeing so many people tuning in for these. I will also be launching a, an online Etsy shop in the next couple of months with um, prints, posters, 
um, eventually stickers, maybe t-shirts and stuff, and I will definitely be sponsoring the stream, maybe doing some giveaways of high quality merch when that goes live. We will allow that. <laughs> oh, oh, you'll allow it. I, I will allow it only this once. All right, so final builds. Um, bum, 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 bum. Jax, no complaints. Pretty standard build. Like, on, honestly, I would not have changed too much there. Uh, he had a good effect. I would have liked to see him being able to pull off some plays with that teleport, though. If you're taking teleport, it means that you want to have an impact on the global game. And he really didn't use the teleport for much besides just, like, returning to lane and dueling with Renekton. So just as a, a comment towards his playstyle, that's something that I would adjust. Either take an offensive summoner spell and try to dominate the lane itself, or use the teleport to influence the, the overall match. Uh, Lucian had a phenomenal laning phase in, in terms of just setting up kills between him and Morgana. Great bindings from Morgana. Uh, it would have been nice to see some more people attempting to dodge the bindings, but overall he, he did just fine. I personally don't like building AP on Morgana support. I prefer a more utilities and tank centered approach, but she pulled off what she needed to. Good job. <clears throat> Aatrox, pretty good influence on the game. A lot of life steal. I, I don't know. I think that's a little overkill. He could have gone for like a Guardian Angel for double revive passives. He could have gone Last Whisper if he was having issues with armor. He could have gone for like a Zephyr if he wanted to avoid CC and continue just like landing crazy numbers of auto attacks for more healing. Honestly though, there's there's just not much that I can offer in terms of vice there. More boiled down to playstyle. And yeah, I think the lifestyle was slightly overkill. Uh, Renekton, I, I liked his build overall. His playstyle was awesome. Um, as we mentioned in game, he can either try and just bully people out and uh, win lane, which is what he went for with his, his uh, split pushing, his dueling, his uh, proxy farming, or he could have tried to roam around. I really agree with his decision to try and keep Jack shut down as long as he could. So good play there. I like his build. Sivir, we had a lot of issues with her timing on her spell shield, her positioning, her last hitting, but that boils down to champion knowledge, and um, it's possible she was lagging. I can't, I can't say too much there. Her build was okay. I have no huge complaints there. Yeah, it's all pretty standard. Akali, her build, again, relatively standard. Um, not sh Build to water cutlass. Is that actually needed for... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay, sorry. They, they changed the build for Gunblade. But yeah, overall, her build was fine. Fiora, we had some complaints about how she was influencing the early game. I feel that she could have maintained almost as much farm and still been influencing lanes or counter-jungling or doing something to influence the global map and still maintain that level of farm. I feel that. She's free to disagree with me. It worked out in the end. She played very well. It was just I felt like she was letting her team down in terms of her map presence. So that she can take that or leave that. It's completely up to her. Lulu, I have no complaints. I think she could have positioned slightly better to, to influence that lane a little bit more. But overall, she did kind of what she needed to do. My only real complaint there was she didn't take exhaust. Do you have any final comments there, Red Queen? Uh, no, I think you covered it all, actually. Okay, perfect.